Hey guys, all right, so we're working in Maya. Uh, I want to go over some things that I use a lot, and this is the section that I'm just kind of calling basic navigation. So I'm going to take you through the things that I'm like constantly using. So if you watch any of the videos of me making things in Maya, uh, I want you guys to have a, a good idea of, you know, what button was that, or where was that, or what did he just do? Um, and so I'm hoping in this series to kind of cover all those things. And in this video, we're going to start with just the navigational aspects that I'm calling it, um, in regards to like the UI and like activating things and, and such, um, staying away from necessarily the tools themselves in this particular video, but, uh, let's get going. So right off the bat, um, when I want to get an object out, right, there's these cool things called marking menus. And we're going to talk more about those in a, in a minute. Um, but let's say I want to place an object down. Uh, I won't necessarily go into the menus up here, but there's a nice shortcut with shift and right clicking. And it's going to pop up this menu here. And you see we have plane, cylinder, cone, sphere, cube, everything you need, including all this stuff down here. Um, so right away, if I want to make something, uh, let's say a sphere, I'll just shift, hold right click. So I'm still holding right click and then just shoot my mouse over to the side and let go. And now when I drag, I have my sphere. And you can, of course, edit the location in your transforms and your channel box here. Um, if you want to change the amounts and all that, it's right here on the side channel box. Um, however, some of you might not have done that in the same way if you're following along. And I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to delete this and we're going to do that again. The thing to look out for is down here, interactive creation. So if I turn that off and then we make a sphere again, it's not going to let us drag it out to whatever size. Some of you might prefer this. I like being able to dra uh, drag the size out. Um, and then you could, of course, edit the amounts by clicking under inputs, polysphere, and you could say the radius of how big it is, either by clicking and dragging, right? Or just by typing in. So let's say we want a radius of five, and then we want it to be subdivided like eight and 10 or something like that, or maybe this is five, whatever you want. Um, and you could also change this is obviously sphere uh, specific, but the type of UVs uh, kind of getting off the point there. So again, I could re-enable interactive creation and then go in, let's make a cube this time, click where I want it and just drag and then click again for the height. And there we go. So that's really cool. That's uh, the quick creation menu by shift and right clicking. Uh, it's a different one here now because I have a an object selected. So the shift right click stuff is actually context sensitive. So we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is the outliner. And that's this thing here on the left. This is a great feature of, of Maya um, that lets you kind of see all your objects in your scene or the hierarchy of things. If you have like a skeleton and rigs and stuff going on um, groups as well. If you do not see this, it's this button right here. You could click to toggle it. And so I'll, I'll use this all the time. Sometimes I'll turn it off um, in order to just have more viewing space, which uh, another hotkey there, another tip would be control space, full screens, and then control space again, we'll go back. So if you want to like get into modeling mode, go ahead and control space and get all that real estate back. Um, so I'm going to pop open the outliner. And other thing to be aware of here is you can have groups. And so you can create a group either by going to edit group or using the hotkey control G and then ungrouping with control shift G or, or using this menu. So I'll click that. And now we see it's in this little node in this group. And so we can move it on the group level or internally. And sometimes if you want to put things together, this could be a great way to move things all, all together. So I'll make another object. Let's put a sphere this time. And now this one's outside of the group. And if I group this, it's a separate group. So what if we want it in that one? Well, there's a couple ways. You could either have them both selected and group it when they're not in a group. So for instance, if I ungroup this, oops. 
Oh, it's not letting me. Okay, so it's not letting me do it that way in this case. Um, let's try one more. So one way you could do that instead, and this is what I was going to show you in a second, is selecting it and then middle mouse clicking and dragging. And that will take it out of the group. So again, if we if we group these things by having them both selected, hit group, it's going to toss them in that group. And then we should be able to just ungroup and it takes them right back out. I must have fiddled with this one a little. It's kind of finicky in that regard um, with these with these nodes here. Um, but otherwise, you should naturally just be able to ungroup. Um, but now you know a way to ungroup it in case it's acting up. It's by selecting it and then middle mouse clicking. So what's good about that now is that you could also use middle mouse click to reorder this stuff. So you can see how the dotted line is going either between the words or on top. So I could middle mouse drag onto the sphere and now the sphere is apparent to the cube. And if I move the sphere around, the cube will follow. So it's the same kind of idea with the group too, right? So if I move this guy into the group and then put the sphere in there too, again, middle mouse clicking and dragging. Now if I select the group, I could just move them together. So it's really nice for having like a bunch of objects that you want to keep uh, together like that. Um, and you could also scale, and the group will have its own scale and everything. Um, and you could rename the group by double clicking. So you can name it whatever. <laughs> and then if you delete the group, it's taking the stuff inside of it with it. So in this case, let's see if ungroup works again. You might have to have them selected. No, ungroup worked fine that time. Um, so there we go. So now you have your objects back. Um, so that's the outliner in a very general sense. So you'll see me futzing with that here and there. Um, super useful. So, okay. Now let's get rid of the sphere and focus on the next thing. Uh, those marking menus I was talking about with the right clicking, we used shift right click before, but if you do regular right click, you get a whole bunch of different options. In this case, it's one of the most useful things in Maya is being able to switch between your vertex, your edge, object mode, multi-mode. So if you want to select both an edge and a vert, that's super handy. But the important thing here is that you can right click and change between vert, face, edge, whatever you need. Um, and you could actually do this really quick. This is, this is one of the things that Maya excels at. So if I want to go to edge, I could just go up real quick or vertex to the left real quick. And you don't even see the menu at that point, right? It's so fast. Go to object mode, you know, if once you do this a little, you'll start remembering where these are, right? So edge, top, face, bottom, vertex to the left. And then you've even got UVs that you could select if you needed. Um, so it's really quick in that manner. Uh, I, I definitely recommend getting used to this to speed up your workflow a lot. And multi is quite useful. Um, another thing I would use in the same menu, there's a lot here. If you look, there's, there's select all, deselect all. You could select the hierarchy of something. Uh, in inversion. The other ones I'll use the most are down here, which would be material attributes or assigning materials or assigning materials that already exist. Or if you have ones favorited, I haven't used that too much myself, but maybe I'll put a material on that's like a checkerboard or, or texture. And then I can come down here just by right clicking the object, assign, and then put the material on it. Or if I don't have one on there already, right? If I go in object mode, I can hit assign new material and it'll bring up the material creation palette. So that's really cool. And then if you already have a material on it, attributes, and then it'll take you to your, to where your material options are, right? I just went to the end here with the material itself, the fong. Um, so that's really, really handy. So the other things to be aware of now is that if I shift right click, like we accidentally did earlier, there's different options, right? We're not creating nor selecting. So we're not making boxes and spheres and whatnot. And I'm not changing modes like this. So let's take a look at what's there. So shift and right click. Now we have weld tools, extruding, multi-cut, sculpt, fill holes, mirroring. Like there's just about everything here, which is great, right? If we want to insert an edge loop, boom, we got an edge loop. And then right, um, you know, right away, you can choose something else. You can delete your edge, um, go to multi-cut. I use this all the time, right? This stuff is great. 
Uh, we'll cover the tools themselves more in the next video. But my point here is that you can edit really quickly. And even down here now, I think there's different options than when we were in um, object mode, right? So now you see merge, we see soft hard edges. So we didn't have that before. Like in vertex mode now, we don't have soft hard, we have vertex normals. And we have paint vertices, delete vertex. So play around with the mode you're in. If you're in edge, face, all that, right? Now we can reverse our normals. Um, so that's really useful. Play around with it. Try different modes. Shift right click. See what's there and, and get to know it because this is a very handy way for whatever you don't have a uh, hotkey, which we'll talk more about later as well. Um, if you just get used to the marking menu there, you could do commands really quickly, right? Maybe we want to poke the face. Boom. It, it's great, actually. Okay, so we've talked about that. Now, there's actually more of those that I think are worth pointing out because I am not super familiar. I, I wasn't familiar with these for a while when, when using Maya. And those are, so instead of holding uh, right click or shift right click, if you hold Q, W, E, or R, and left click, this is an important distinction. You're not left, you're not right clicking, you're left clicking. And now you see we have symmetry, the lasso selection tool. It's gonna to give you options for the tool whose hotkey you're pressing. So in this case, I'm holding Q. And now with holding Q, it's giving me all these options for selection. Now if I hold W, right, I switch to the move tool, holding W, left click, it's giving me some different options. And the things I like here are the, the constraints. So we have transform constraints, selection constraints, preserving UVs, and then changing, do you want to be in object mode? Do you want to be on an axis to move along an axis? Um, this stuff is really handy, and I'll, and I'll show you why. Um, so preserve UVs in general, if you have a texture on there and you're editing the geometry afterwards, usually you want to have that selected. So in this case, okay, let's go to my move mode. Uh, I'm going to select a vertice, and normally I could just move it around, right, wherever. But maybe I want it to stay on this edge. So by holding W and clicking it, I can do a transform constraint and say edge slide. So now when I move this, it's only going to move along those edges. And that's really, really handy, as I'm sure you can imagine. And then you could turn it right back off if you want. And there's same, you know, with object mode versus world mode if you for instance we have this and we turn this guy to the side so in world mode it's just pointing up you know xyz is pointing the same direction as the world but what if i wanted to move this guy along its own axes well holding w left clicking object now it's remembering it's looking at these rotations and i could just move it along there or along any of these and that will stay the way it is until we freeze our transforms, which we'll, we'll also talk about in the editing portion. So I undid it there, but that's really handy. And again, it applies to your rotation, your scale, your move, all that stuff. So look through these menus, become familiar with what's in there. You'll, you'll see me using them a lot. And so if something like this pops up, now you know, okay, he's using one of those menus, one of those um, hold and click menus. Okay, great. So where, where can we go from here? What else do we have? So other things I want to talk about are showing and hiding things, right? So if we have multiple things and we don't necessarily want to see everything, um, but we don't want to delete it. So there's, mul there's multiple ways to hide stuff. Um, the first way, I believe, is just by going in and display hide. So it's control H and alt H are the the hotkeys for it. Uh, I don't use this way too often. It, it is convenient. Um, and you could click and voila, your object is gone. So if you're working with many objects, this is a great way to do it. Um, another way to do it is clicking your object. And you could see here in, in our outliner, it's kind of grayed out. And that gives us an idea that it's hidden. So if I click it, there's also this visibility thing here, and we can just slide back and forth 
to toggle it on or off. You could also, I believe, use zero and one. So zero and then one to turn it on and off. Um, so that's really handy. So I might grab a bunch of stuff and then just turn them off or on. When I dragged it, it was only doing the one for some reason. Um, but again, zero and one worked just fine. So that's another way. Uh, and then one last way, which is a nice segue as well, is into the groups. So I'll use these a lot too. In this display tab here in your channel box, you got layers. And so there's four options here. This, this will move your layer up, down, create a new layer, and create a new layer with the objects you have selected. So I'm going to use this one a lot. So I'll create that. We got a new layer. And now we already put this object in it because we use this last button. Now if I press this V, which stands for visibility, it's going to hide and show that, which is really useful. Um, the other thing I'll use a lot is this third one, which will turn it either into like a template, which is kind of hard to see right now. It's like a gray, there you go, gray lines. Um, so you kind of see through. My background color is not, not really helping. Um, I believe you could change in settings. There's some color options, but I'll leave that for another time. If you press it again, it's reference, which means you could see it, but you can't select it. So this is good to have something there that you don't want to edit, but you still need to see for proportions or for whatever reason and then click it again to turn it off. So that's nice. Now, what if we want to add this guy to this? Well, this is going to create a new layer and this is going to create a new layer and assign the object to that new layer. What if I want to add it to just this layer? So we can right click on the layer and you'll have more options. So in here, for instance, we have add selected objects. So now, boom, they're both in there. And if you want to remove them, select them both and remove selected objects, or there's empty the layer, which will take everything out of it. So I'll remove the objects, and if we want to get rid of the layer, right click, delete layer. Very useful. Okay, so what else do we got? Let's see here. Another thing I wanted to show was um, the, the polygons and being able to see like up in this corner, like how many triangles something is, how many UVs it is, you know, does it have, uh, usually when doing for games, you usually want to know triangles, sometimes UVs, um, sometimes verts, but triangles is the big one. Um, and so we could see them in the top left corner there. Now, if you don't see them up there, there's a way to turn them on and toggle them, which is in display under heads up display, poly count. Now there is an options menu here that will let you change some settings, but not, not anything I ever really use. So, but I'll have this up pretty much all the time. So that's useful. Another thing that I want you guys to be aware of when we're working, um, you'll sometimes undo what you're doing, right? Uh, and one thing that's really annoying in a lot of programs is when you hit your limit of undos. So let's talk about that really quick because I think that's an important one to cover. Um, if you go to windows up here, settings and preferences, preferences, I believe it's just under settings. Nope. It's under settings undo. And so you could turn it to a certain amount or infinite. Um, I, I think it takes up more memory when you have infinite. Um, but I haven't had any issues with it really. Um, so you could turn that on or give yourself a great big amount of undos, but I really wanted to point that one out because it's a roadblock I've fell into or run into a few times where, oh crap, I need to undo a bunch of stuff. And then, oh no, I can't undo anymore. So really wanted that, um, to be in here as well. All right. We got a couple more things to talk about. Um, another one that I will do pretty often is x-ray mode, which is being able to see through your objects. Now, I don't know if you've noticed when I toggled that on and off, I have a hotkey for it right now, but there is right here a button for it called x-ray. So it is hotkeyable, but by clicking it, you can see through your objects. So it gets pretty darn useful. So if you see me go, 
in half in viz while I'm working. That's that's the area you do that. Um, other buttons up here I'll use are this one, which will turn the textures on and off. We don't have anything applied, so we're not going to see it right now. Um, these, which is wireframe. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it does. Uh, I have most of these hotkeyed. Um, you got smooth shade versus wireframe, so it'll toggle back and forth between those. Uh, sometimes they're like working with that on. And then lighting. So if we added a light to the scene, we'd have that. Um, grid. If you don't want to see your grid there, you get rid of that. You could also change the grid by right-clicking it and doing grid options. And so by changing subdivisions, for example, or length and width, grid lines, all that, you could get different looking results. So let's see. Um, another one that I use constantly is this one. Right next to the X-ray, it's called Isolate Select. So this, if you have a bunch of stuff, it's only going to show you what you had selected when you toggled that. So it could be one thing, it could be two things, as many as you want, but whatever you have selected. So if I'm working on like, you know, for instance, we're making like a sword and I'm just doing the handle, I wanna focus on the handle and not the blade, I'll select the handle and then isolate. And this is something I have hotkeyed as well because I'm, I'm using it all the time, to be honest. Okay, let's get rid of these. And let's talk about something else that can be annoying and, and that's good to know about. And in this case, let's delete a face. And it's dark in there, right? So that is because we have double-sided on and we can't really see through it. Now, if this is something you want to toggle, you need to have your object selected, go to the attribute editor, find your actual object or shape. So you have your object and shape. These all have like different menus. So you're going to need the one that has render stats in it. So find render stats up here in your attribute editor. And then down here is double-sided. It's kind of buried. I know there's a lot of other options in here that are useful too, but double-sided is what you want to tick. If you only want to see the, the side that has the normals there. Or, you know, it depends if the material you're using later on is double-sided or not. But generally, things that you're building are not going to be double-sided unless the shader calls for it. Um, so here's where you can change that in Maya to see whether or not, like, oh, am I missing faces there? You know? So you could toggle that. All right. A couple more things. We're almost there. So another one I want to talk about that can be annoying that I've run into in the past and I want to preemptively talk about is if your object is really big, say you import something from another program or someone gives you a file to work with and the scale is, is drastically different. So in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this up to like 100 and then we'll zoom into it. And that, that looks pretty good. So let's turn it up to 200 until we get the problem I'm talking about. So looks good. So what's going to happen here at some point is the camera is going to start messing up and you can't see your object, right? Like right here. I can't see it. Let's find, maybe there's a place where we could kind of see it. No, 500 did it. Okay, let's go to 500 just to, to talk about. So, okay, there we go. Perfect example. You see how it's disappearing into the background? That sucks. And sometimes it's hard to know what's going on. Um, so one way to get around this and to make it so you can see your object again is this button over here. It's a little camera that says camera attributes. So you click that. I usually have to click it twice because it'll go to the attribute editor, click it again. Now we're going to have our camera selected, our perspective camera, and a bunch of options for it. Um, so let's see here. We need to change the scale, which is up here. I was zoomed down a little. Uh, apologies. So all the way at the top, there's camera attributes. And the things we want to keep an eye out on are the near clip plane and the far clip plane. So what I found to fix this is by turning up your far clip plane. So I'll usually like add another zero or two, whatever's needed. So that one worked. And then sometimes though, you'll, you'll see through the edges. You see how these edges are kind of bleeding into the object. That'll be your near clip plane. So I'll turn this up maybe to one and voila, it looks appropriate. Now we know it's massive 
because we scaled it up and we did that intentionally, but sometimes we might not want to do that on purpose, right? Um, or we get another object from someone else. So it's good to know how to at least see it and know you're not crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and put the scale back to one and look how tiny that is. And so zoom back and we're good. So I thought that was really important. Okay. So while we're talking about navigation and all this stuff, um, let's talk really quickly about the shelf. I have this thing up here. You have my tools. You might have a lot of these presets in here, um, but you could actually make your own. And so if you click over here and click new shelf and you can name it. So I'm just gonna say shelf and it's gonna look like this, it's gonna be empty. Now you could add pretty much anything you want to this. Um, and to do that, let's go ahead and we'll look in the menu here. So let's say I want to add bevel. So hovering over here and I believe it's control and shift and click and it's gonna add it to your shelf. And that's adding in a weird way. <laughs> I've never seen it go vertical like that. So maybe I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. Let's see, control, click, shift, click. No, I'm pretty sure that was it. Why is it? Whoa, this is weird me out. This is weird me out. All right, give me one second. I'm going to get rid of the shelf. Oh, this is tripping me out. Delete, delete. Let's try that again. I've, I've actually never seen that. That, that threw me off a lot. Let's, let's try adding something to my tools right here instead. Let's try connect. Oopsies. So it might say you have the editor where you can add stuff, but there is a way to just, there we are. So yeah, it's, it's control shift and click. So for some reason, our new shelf, <laughs> it was being goofy. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to name it goofy. And then we have it there. Okay. So shift. Yeah, that worked fine. Okay. So we just ran into like a really weird scenario there, but yeah, holding shift and control, and then you could add whichever one of these that you want, which is really great. And then just like with the outliner middle mouse click, and we could reorder this. And then once you have things that you like, like for instance, I really like having like save or import or export and all those can go in there too and move them wherever you want. And then when you want to save it, click this little cog, hit save all shelves. Now you also have an editor there. You could look in and kind of rearrange things by pressing up and down, like in our layer editor. Um, but make sure you save it when you're done and you can also get rid of them. Same button, delete shelf. So that's really useful. If you know, there's tools you want to use, maybe you don't have a hotkey for, um, like freeze transforms for me. I use that often or like deleting my history, a lattice tool, um, st stuff like that. I, I think it's, it's really handy to have an additional area and you could always, you could always hide this as well if you need. So on that note, I really want to talk about like setting hotkeys, because if you're going to be navigating around Maya, um, or any 3d package for that matter. The first step I believe is to figure out what tools do what, figure out what tools you're using most often, and then make sure you have a hotkey for them. A lot of these programs will have hotkeys pre-built in, but usually not for everything that you need. So it's great to learn those hotkeys, or if, if you want to change them by all means, make it easy for you, um, to use the program quickly. And so the more I use these programs, the more I, I discovered I was using things like hard and soft edges, right? If I want to make a hard edge, now I can just press a button and make a hard edge because I saw myself using it a lot. Um, before this, I would use like shift, right click, and it's right there. You have hard and soft and edge. And so there's lots of really quick ways to, to access your tools and to do things. Um, but I encourage you to hotkey as much as you can. And so to do that, you go to windows, I believe it's in settings, preferences, and then hotkey editor. So you're going to want to use that. And then you could look for different menu items. You could search by command by the hotkey itself. 
Um, so like we could search bevel and then it'll pop up and you could see what part it's, it's in. So for instance, right here, I have bevel set to control shift B and you could see really nicely over here, which things are already hot keyed. So that's, that's really handy as well. Um, and if you hold alt or control or shift, it, it shows you, you know, I don't have alt T or alt W or anything hot keyed. That's really nice. Or alt F1, whatever those. So you could search through here, you know, control shift alt. All I have is D. So there's plenty more things you could hotkey really by just trying these different combinations. So I'm going to close this highly recommend hotkeying. Um, and so the way I've approached it is I I've come from 3d max a while ago when I first started. And so there was a couple things about max that I liked, such as pressing one, two, and three for selecting, uh, for instance, vertices, edges, faces, and then I have four set to object mode again, and it toggles between my last selection, um, stuff like that. So hundred percent do that. Um, and the last thing I'll mention while we're going around, I'm sure there's some things I've missed, but, um, these were all kind of the really big ones. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is if you press the space bar, you have this menu and this I believe is called the hot box. And so this is, if you notice, it's all these menus. It's like every menu in Maya built in here. And if you just click, now you have that menu pop out the same menu that was right here. You just press space bar. This is actually usually how I like create lights. I'll just go create lights. Give me a light. Um, but yeah, all this stuff, your view, your shading, if you want to edit your mesh, right? You have all those commands. I personally think this is a little slower than just using a hotkey. Um, but it's nice because it has everything and you know what, sometimes you need that tool that you don't do, do very often. Um, and you could customize this and I'm not going to get into that, but there's ways to customize your marking menus, the hot box. Um, there's different controls. Um, there's also sections here. These lines aren't for nothing. These are actually four different areas. And if you left click outside, it's giving me more options. And I believe you could, you could edit these. I haven't myself. I use the regular marking menus more than, than this one, but I want you to be aware of it. And if you see it pop up or someone's using it, um, now you know what it is and you could kind of hunt down and figure out, okay, I know it exists. I know where to find it. Let me see how to do that one thing that they did. So I hope this helped helped. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I hope this helped. Um, it was a lot. I know I tried to keep it quick and it was still a half an hour. Um, so by all means go back, rewind and revisit and try things, play around with it. It needs to, you need to be comfortable with these tools. Um, ideally you get it to where it's second nature so that you're not thinking about it when you're actually creating. And that'll take a while. Um, the more experience you have using the tools, the more they'll just naturally happen. And the more you personalize it too, with your hotkeys and different menus and everything, um, you won't have to think as much about like, okay, I need to do a bridge here. Oh crap. I have to cap this thing. How did I cap again? And, and you'll just have buttons for all of it. Like I tried to do hotkeys that are like, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing bridge, you know, I'll try to do it on a B key. So it might be like control B or control shift B or whatever it was. Um, and so that kind of helps me with how I'm setting all this stuff up. So again, go back through it. Um, whatever you have to, to digest the stuff, play around with it. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of good stuff in there that I wish I had known when I was first starting. And it's a lot of stuff that you're going to see me use in, in the main tutorials.